A very powerful hurricane has developed in the Atlantic Ocean, which is named Umberto, which is about to become a Category 5 hurricane later today. But on the other hand, we have Tropical Storm Imelda that is about to form just off the coast of Florida, and this tropical storm is expected to become a hurricane and could bring some serious problems to the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about both of these hurricanes and what impacts they could bring to the United States. We'll begin with what's happening right now in the Atlantic Ocean, and this right here is Hurricane Umberto, which is now becoming a high-end Category 4 hurricane, and this is forecasted to become our second Category 5 hurricane of the Atlantic hurricane season. Keep in mind, we've only had three hurricanes so far this season, and all three of these hurricanes have become Category 4s or higher. Now, this is pretty crazy to say, especially with how quiet this hurricane season has been. Luckily, none of these have impacted the United States far beyond tropical storm impacts. However, we do have a Melda that is currently forming. This is is actually called potential tropical cyclone nine right now the area of circulation is currently located just to the south of the bahamas and over the next couple of days this will continue to move to the north it is going to be very close to florida luckily the worst of the impacts will stay offshore but there will at least be some impacts right along the east coast including both the treasure and space coast of florida and then as we go into early next week we are going to be watching imelda be very close to the carolinas and georgia and if it is to make landfall or if it even just stalls offshore we will have serious problems on our hand when it comes to a potential for a major to even, you know, devastating flooding event that could occur because we could easily see upwards of 5 to 15 inches of rain in a widespread area. There is still a scenario that this could turn out to see, but it does look like there's still higher odds that this will be making some impacts, at least to coastal regions in the Carolinas, if not maybe even inland. And we're going to talk all about the scenarios that could evolve and what the probabilities of each of those scenarios are in this forecast. Now, this is a broad overview of what the tropics look like like right now, we do have Hurricane Umberto, which is currently located far to the south of Bermuda. This is forecasted to become a Category 5 hurricane by this evening, with maximum sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. Wind gusts as high as 200 miles per hour are also going to be a possibility. As we go into late Sunday and Monday, this will turn off to the northwest. This is not expected to impact the United States directly. However, this has big implications down the road on where Amelda is going to go, because we're going to have the Fujiwara effect in place, which basically means two different low pressure systems, which in this case are going to be two different hurricanes, are going to be so close to each other that they're going to be kind of pulling and twisting around, and that's going to cause a big change in direction for where Imelda will go in a few days, and we're going to talk more about what that means here in just a moment. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, Umberto will turn off to the north and northeast. It will boomerang out to sea, which again could have implications on what exactly Imelda does as it gets closer to the Carolina coastlines. Now on the other hand, we have Imelda, which is currently a potential tropical cyclone just to the the north of Cuba, and then as we go into late tonight and early tomorrow, this is forecasted to become Tropical Storm Amelda, and this will just be to the east of Miami by only about a couple hundred miles. As we go into late Tuesday and Wednesday, this is forecasted to become a Category 1 hurricane just off to the east of Jacksonville, just to the south of North Carolina and South Carolina. From there, the cone of uncertainty is very large. This could literally go anywhere. It could go as far west as Georgia, maybe even as far south as Jacksonville. It's a very unlikely scenario, but the eye of this this could go that direction. This more likely scenario is that this crashes into South Carolina, somewhere between Savannah, Georgia, and Myrtle Beach. There's also a possibility it could meander up towards North Carolina. It could do a big loop. It could also just go out to sea well before it ever gets to the Carolinas. Any scenario that unfolds, though, will probably still bring some level of impacts to places along the East Coast. We'll talk more about the impacts in just a second. Now, the models have changed a lot over the last 24 hours on exactly where Amelda is going to track. So let's go ahead and look at the spaghetti model. This basically combines a bunch of different models into one graphic, gives us an idea of where Amelda and also Umberto are going to track. This is what it looks like as we go into Monday afternoon. So Humberto is still going to be very far to the east of the United States. It will stay west of Bermuda as well. There will be some impacts to Bermuda, but it should stay far enough to the west where tropical storm impacts are likely all you guys are going to see there. However, look at this. This is going to be Amelda as we go into Monday and also into early Tuesday. This is likely to become a Category 1 hurricane. I even think there is a potential that this could make a run at becoming a Category 2 hurricane just to the east of Florida. Now, notice how close it is to the coastline even of East Florida. There will likely be some impacts anywhere from the Space Coast all the way back into far southeastern Georgia by as early as late Monday night. With that said, I don't think we're seeing anything major in those areas, just some gusty winds and also maybe some light storm surge along the coastline. As we go into Tuesday morning, that's where things start to get a lot trickier. There are a few models that start to pull Amelda off to the east pretty early 
early. There's also some that kind of race this all the way up into South Carolina and Georgia by Tuesday morning. So there is a possibility that landfall of Imelda could happen as early as Tuesday. There's also a possibility landfall doesn't happen at all. There's also a middle grade scenario where Imelda starts to slow down as it gets closer to South Carolina on Tuesday. And then eventually as we go into late Tuesday into Wednesday, it kind of just stalls just to the south of South Carolina. And so there's basically three scenarios by the time we go into Wednesday morning, which is obviously very complicated. One of which is it turns out to see this would avoid most impacts for the United States. The second scenario, which is the most likely scenario, would be right in the middle of that. It stays just far enough offshore where we avoid major impacts inland, but there would be major impacts still near the coastal regions, including major flooding and storm surge and high winds. There's also a third scenario, which was the scenario that was more likely yesterday. This scenario is a little bit less likely today, but it could make landfall or be very, very close to the South Carolina coastline. This would cause major problems for those inland and also across the Carolina coastline. So no matter what happens, there will be impacts. It's just a matter of when Amelda turns, and that's all going to come down to the intensity of Umberto, and it also relies on where Umberto tracks over the next few days. Now, personally, what I think is going to happen is that I do think Amelda is going to get close to the Carolina coastline, but I do think it is going to turn out to sea because I think at this point, uh, you know, Humberto is going to be a very intense hurricane. It's going to get to Category 5 intensity today, and with how intense this is going to be, I do think the Fujiwara effect is going to be strong enough to the point where these two tropical systems do get close enough together where Amelda will eventually turn. It'll kind of be attracted to its partner, in this case, Umberto. So it'll get very close together at some point down the road, and that is, I think, what is going to exactly happen over the next few days. But again, we cannot rule out a landfalling scenario. It's too early to say that. We also can't rule out that this avoids the United States almost entirely, which is still a possibility, but obviously the odds of that are not that high right now. Now, this right here is a fairly likely scenario of what is going to evolve with Amelda over the next few days. This one looks like as we go into late tomorrow night, we are going to have the heaviest of the rainfall just to the east of Florida Sunday night. And then in early Monday, Imelda is going to be very close to the east coast of Florida, where some of the outer bands are going to reach anywhere from Port St. Lucie all the way back up towards Jacksonville, Florida. And even some of the outer bands will be reaching up into South and North Carolina, but as early as Monday morning as well. As we go into late Monday night and Tuesday, that is when Imelda gets awfully close to the coastline. Tons of rain will be falling across the Carolinas, Virginia, and South Carolina. A lot of this will be light to moderate, but it will stack up over time fairly quickly. If the eye of Imelda were to get any closer to the Carolina coastline, we could see some potential for catastrophic flooding near the coastlines on Tuesday. So that's something we're watching for. On Wednesday, the GFS model does have this turning out to sea. Nonetheless, rain would continue across the Carolinas and Virginia on Wednesday. And then by Thursday, it moves out to sea. Now, keep in mind, there are other scenarios at play here. We could also see it make landfall. We could see it loop around, which would be a very catastrophic event if that were to occur. And then also it could just turn out to see much faster than what even the GFS model is showing. So there's still several scenarios, but this is a good middle ground to at least give you an idea of what the possibilities are with the Melda. Now, to give you an idea of who should be preparing, taking action for, or preparing for a Melda, this is a map that we've created to give you an idea of exactly who needs to be watching this. So right now, the areas that should be staying aware of Imelda, basically just watching the forecast, making sure that you guys are locked in on that, is anywhere from Virginia all the way back through the east coast of Florida. You don't necessarily have to prepare for anything, though. If you're anywhere in the red, this is an area that you should be preparing for because we are expecting the threat for major flooding. And on top of that, there is a potential for storm surge and even hurricane force winds if Imelda were to make landfall. Even if it doesn't make landfall, those impacts are all still in play. And then we do have a small pink area that we've added, which I would be taking action for, and this is mainly for the risk of flooding, because I do think even if Imelda were to turn out to sea, there is a good chance that we will see at least localized flooding of upwards of five to eight inches of rain, and localized spots could be higher than that. Also, I do want to show you guys three different scenarios when it comes to the amount of rainfall that could come out of Imelda over the next few days, beginning with the European model, which is currently indicating a widespread area between one to four inches of rain, and then right along the coastline is where we would have as much as five to eight inches of rainfall. Localized areas could see higher than that. The European model is a model that does keep Imelda just offshore. And notice if it were to get closer, this is upwards of 20 to 30 inches of rain that could dump right in the Atlantic Ocean. Now, keep in mind, if we were to see the shift back to the north again and make landfall in South Carolina or Georgia, all that rain would follow with it. So we need to really watch this very closely. The smallest shift to the west could make a big difference. This is the GFS model, which is what I was just showing you guys a moment ago for the simulation of where this will be going. And it shows basically the same thing with a widespread one to four inches of rainfall. This isn't catastrophic by any means, but again, localized flooding would be at play. We would probably have some localized areas in the Carolinas around six 
six to seven inches of rainfall. And then this right here is the Weather Prediction Center's forecast of rainfall, which actually has the heaviest amount of rainfall a little bit closer to the coastline of South and North Carolina. So this is definitely something that we need to keep an eye on. There could be some localized areas upwards of 15 to 20 inches of rainfall, even in South Carolina, if this scenario were to play out. And I know we haven't really talked a whole lot about Umberto in this video, but this is what Hurricane Umberto looks like right now. It's actually a fairly small storm right now to the south of Bermuda. It's going to stay as a fish storm over the next few days. It's not expected to impact really any land, at least majorly here over the next several days, unlike Amelda. But I do just wanted to point out that the eye is extremely tiny. This is pretty impressive. Decent little convective towers going up all around the eye. This is almost undoubtedly going to become a Category 5 hurricane later this afternoon. So definitely a very impressive storm. And again, all three hurricanes that we've had so far this year in the Atlantic Ocean have all become Category 4s or higher. I do not think Amelda is going to get anywhere near Category 4 intensity, but that is just, you know, an interesting fact so far this season. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video could be as early as later this afternoon if there's any major changes to Amelda, but if not, our next forecast will be tomorrow. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. I also have a huge announcement. We have new overlays that are coming out for hurricanes and tropical storms if we go live. This is a brand new layout that we are making that is really incredible. There's a lot of new changes, including a new breaking news thing that's going to be on the screen with new information about whichever tropical system that we're talking about. There's also a thing here on the right side of your screen that you can see that is actually going to also alternate certain things when it comes to the wind speeds. It's going to go over movement, even sometimes location as well. So there's a lot of new stuff coming to our overlays. There's even more stuff coming in the near future as well. You'll see it animated in real time, assuming we go live for Imelda at some point this week. So I'm really excited about that. And the best part of all of this is that we are not using AI. We are using real developers and graphic designers that we've employed to do this stuff. And we have a lot more stuff coming. I really appreciate your support on the channel because that would not be possible without all of your support. Thank you guys all so much for watching. We'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.